Hello guys, to a new series I'll be doing on this channel, named Prehistoric Creature Analysis. Here we'll be taking ourselves into the specifics and characteristics of strange and wonderful creatures of prehistory. Without further ado, let's begin. Now, anomalocaris or anomalocaris is a meaning uh, abnormal shrimp or unusual shrimp. Uh, it's placed in the extinct genus known as Anomalocarid, which is widely noted for being closely related to the ancestral arthropods. Originally, when the first fossils were discovered by Joseph Friedrich Whiteves, and later more fossils found by Charles Doolittle, Hawkind, the fossils were thought to be separate creatures. Now Joseph mistook the fossils and said in 1892 for a separate crustacean-like creature because the arm reminded him of a lobster tail. Now the anomalocaris's mouth was discovered by Charles Doolittle but he mistook it for a jellyfish and placed it in the genus Platea. Now Harry B. Whittington discovered while he was searching for other fossils, what seemed to be parts of a jellyfish and a shrimp's tail. It didn't take him too long to link the two species together, but it took even several more years for the supposed genus of Platea and Lagonia to be linked into what we know as today Anomalocaris. Now Anomalocaris got to the ranges of 70 to about 1 meter long. This may sound small today, but during the Cambrian period, it was by far the biggest predator of its time. Now, Anomalocaris had on both sides of its body with sets of flexible lobes which, which it used to propel itself underwater. Now, the lobes weren't the same through, all throughout its body. The fourth and the fifth was the widest by far, and down the body, the lobes got smaller and smaller. In total, it had 11 lobes. Now, Anomalocaris, for a mouth, had 32 overlapping plates, which were uh, placed in a ring formation, and in the center were ser serrated prongs, which it used to cut down the prey. It also had two large arms which grew to be around 18 centimeters, centimeters which had a bunch of barb-like spikes on them to hold and penetrate the victim. Speaking of the victim, let's talk about the diet of the Anomalocaris. Now, Anomalocaris had a mid uh, it had mid gut glands which said that it had a predatory uh, lifestyle. However, we aren't sure if Anomalocaris could penetrate m mineralized shells, such from the trilobites. We found bite marks on trilobite fossils that suggest that it couldn't penetrate shells of a trilobite, but it would have fed on the genus known as Rachelia, which was not, uh, which didn't have the, any strong uh, shell. Anomalocaris primarily then ate soft uh, organisms that didn't have any protection. And Anomalocaris had one more thing, and that is, Library. and that was its eyes. The eyes of Anomalocaris were advanced for its were super advanced for its time. It had 30 times stronger eyes than the trilobite, with 16,000 lenses, rivaling the modern dragonfly with 28,000 lenses. Now, Anomalocaris lived uh, to be one of uh, history's 
first predators down in the description you can find a series that feature anomal cars and other series that i suggest you watch if you are interested in creature evolution and some interesting creatures that lived in prehistory and not even your beauty can keep a sorry dream alive to you i must say goodbye